Environment Minister Stephen Gilbo is skating on thin ice after his latest jaw-dropping effort to dodge accountability. Despite clear evidence showing his department oversees the shady $8 billion green fund, Gilbo stunned Parliament by brazenly denying responsibility. This blatant refusal to own the massive program under his watch could become Gilbo's political undoing. The minister is already on shaky ground over his extremism, but transparently misleading Canadians about who controls billions in spending may prove an indefensible abuse of power. Gilbo's denials have crossed the line from standard liberal dodging into possible misconduct. With accountability now a firing offense in the Trudeau cabinet, Gilbo's days could be numbered if he continues trying to deceive the public. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we dive into today's video, take a quick second to follow us on Twitter. You won't find the blunt truth about Trudeau's endless scandals in the mainstream media. Their liberal bias hides the real stories. But our Twitter feed breaks through the spin and cover-ups. We tweet multiple times daily, delivering straight facts on Trudeau's hypocrisy and failures. We'll leave you the link down in the description box. Tap that follow button now so you never miss our next viral tweet roasting Trudeau. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. The Trudeau government's habit of dodging responsibility and pointing fingers has hit a new low with Environment Minister Stephen Gilbo. Despite clear evidence that his department co-chairs the advisory board for the controversial $8 billion green fund, Gilbo brazenly told the Environment Committee that only the Department of Industry oversees the massive program. The Environment Commissioner revealed that your government gave away billions of dollars through their $8 billion net zero accelerator fund without knowing any of the emissions would be reduced. Were you aware of this? I unfortunately don't have the uh, Environment Commissioner's report in front of me. I, I was under the impression we were talking about carbon pricing, uh, but I'd, I'd be happy to provide a response in writing to, to, to this question. Talking about carbon pricing, talking about a model that was actually potentially going to reduce emissions. And you were having the government ask, we were asking the government whether to prove it or not. So the net accelerator fund was actually from the commissioner's report, and I'll read it. The majority of the net zero accelerator contribution agreements do not have commitment for emissions reductions. Were you aware of that? Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, this accelerator is under the, uh, the responsibility of the Ministry of uh, Innovation, Science and Economic Development. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they would be happy to provide answer to, to your question. Again, it's not, it's not a question pertaining to carbon pricing. It, we're, we're, Does that concern you at all? That it, this, the commissioner found this? Again, a, um, does it at all? Mr. Chair, I... This buck passing is just another symptom of the Trudeau cabinet's chronic refusal to take ownership. The PM's avoidance of accountability has trickled down to his ministers, leaving Canadians with a government that's allergic to transparency and honesty. Gilbo's shameless denial of responsibility for the Green Fund is just the latest in a series of liberals denying facts to escape blame. If this government put half as much effort into serving citizens as they do into dodging accountability, Canada would be in much better shape. The $8 billion net zero accelerator fund, which is supposed to subsidize green factory conversions, is mired in controversy over its secretive terms and apparent lack of emission reduction standards. When asked about the lack of public details on the $8 billion giveaway to corporations, Gilbo claimed it's not his department's responsibility and pointed the finger at Industry Canada. However, official documents confirm that Environment and Climate Change Canada does co-chair the advisory board that reviews applications and allocates net zero accelerator funding alongside Industry Canada. Gilbo is either embarrassingly unaware of his own department's role or deliberately misleading Parliament to avoid accountability. Neither option looks good for a minister. Gilbo's denial of obvious facts is just another example of the Trudeau government's reflex to pass blame whenever they're pressed to explain questionable conduct. Whether the PMO pressuring the Justice Minister on SNC-Lavalin, denying inappropriate pandemic awarding of government contracts, or refusing to disclose details of massive spending, it wasn't me seems to be automatic response from Liberal ministers. Canadians deserve better from their elected representatives and childish deflections of responsibility. The Liberals seem to have forgotten the principles of honesty and public service in their endless quest to avoid consequences. And this cancer of denial appears to have thoroughly corrupted Stephen Gilbo. He transformed into just another evasive politician under Trudeau's mentorship. Beyond Gilbo's transparent finger-pointing, serious concerns remain about why the government refuses to disclose details of the massive green fund spending. Canadians have no breakdown of which companies are receiving what share of the $8 billion or what measurable emission reduction targets recipients are committed to. 
Considering the huge sums being awarded to highly profitable corporations, it is unacceptable for the government to hide behind claims of commercial sensitivity. The liberals are spending public money, and the public has every right to know where it is going and what taxpayers are getting in return. The Environmental Commissioner's scathing report on the fund's lack of transparency and unclear returns suggests that liberal secrecy is more about concealing poor results than protecting commercial interests. By blocking scrutiny, the government dodges accountability for what looks like a poorly defined cash giveaway with meager emission reductions at a staggering cost. What little public data is available doesn't look good. The Environmental Commissioner found costs per ton of emission reduction ranged up to a jaw-dropping $523. That's far from the efficiency the Liberals promised when selling this corporate handout to Canadians. Even more concerning, some companies receiving subsidies have provided zero emission reduction targets, essentially getting paid from the public purse for nothing. The Environment Commissioner Jerry DeMarco summed it up best when he said, I would say the primary failure is for them to closely track the amount of emissions they are getting for each dollar they are spending. It's simple enough to dole out money, but you need to do it in a way that creates value for money for taxpayers because ultimately it is taxpayers who are paying. That the Liberals continue funneling billions to big business through the Accelerator Fund with no public reporting requirements or accountability. It reeks of a political slush fund to buy corporate support and positive headlines while doing little for the environment. In fact, evidence suggests the $8 billion fund may be even more sinister than a cash giveaway to big polluters. So let's break it down and connect the dots on the Trudeau government's $8 billion climate fund. It looks like this massive fund is being used to manipulate public opinion rather than actually supporting environmental initiatives. There's evidence suggesting that a huge chunk of this money has been secretly funneled to buy favorable media coverage and silence any critics, especially through their go-to propaganda machine, CBC. The contribution agreements are super opaque, making it hard to see which companies and organizations are getting taxpayer money from the fund. This murkiness provides perfect cover for payments to media firms and influential journalists to parrot liberal talking points. This fund essentially lets the government pressure media outlets like the CBC to provide positive coverage while starving critics of resources. Canadians end up unaware that the news they're consuming is biased by climate dollars with partisan strings attached. The Trudeau government seems to have built a sophisticated system to shape narratives and manufacture consent using public money supposedly for green projects. The CBC has been implicated in possibly receiving disguised payments to slant its coverage. Executive bonuses soared last year while the corporation claimed poverty and laid off 141 employees. Despite financial struggles, top execs were exempted from hardship, which reeks of political favor. Given the ongoing media bailouts by the Liberals, these well-timed bonuses raise suspicions that taxpayer money used to keep the CBC afloat came with expectations of favorable journalism. By covertly influencing the media, the Liberals undermine Canada's free press and open democracy while dodging accountability. Spending $8 billion to subtly coerce the media into pushing government interests is a massive abuse of power. It seems like this fund is more about controlling public opinion than reducing emissions. Canadians deserve to know how their money is being used and if shady deals are silencing critical voices. Stephen Gilbo's evasiveness and refusal to disclose details on contribution agreements suggest the Liberals have a lot to hide. If they were committed to transparency, they'd freely provide the data needed to evaluate this mega-project funded by taxpayers. The fact that the Liberals block information requests indicates the scale of their deception. They can't justify their use of the funds, so they resort to hiding inconvenient truths behind a wall of secrecy. It stinks of a government using climate action as a cover to push its political agenda. The $8 billion green fund mess has even caught the attention of famed professor and intellectual Jordan Peterson. He didn't hold back, unleashing a storm of criticism towards Trudeau and Environment Minister Stephen Gilbo for their handling the controversial fund. Like when you talk about your friend Trudeau. Well, that Canada's in the state you get in when you elect Peter Pan to be your leader. He's, uh, I believe that, I think he's an incompetent narcissist. I yeah. think every single word that Justin Trudeau says is a lie. I think every single gesture he makes is a lie. It's all performative. He was a drama teacher, part-time drama teacher. He was completely and utterly unqualified for the job. And he could have taken it and thought, well, I'm an idiot, but, you know, I have a name and I could buckle down and learn. I could apprentice myself. I could surround myself with great people and I could grow into the job. But that isn't what he did. As soon as he got elected, he picked a cabinet that was half women, even though 25% of the elected officials were women. It's like, 
Well, you didn't pick the best people then, buddy. It's mm. 2015. It's time for half of the people to be women. That's the level of thinking he's capable of. Mm. And he's scuttled the Canadian economy. We're about as productive now as Mississippi. Right. We were at parity 10 years ago with the U.S. Right. Our housing is twice as expensive. We have far more immigrants entering the country than you do with your open southern border. Right. Um we're slated to have the worst performing economy in the developing world for the next 30 years. He's scuttling the energy industry. He refused to deliver natural gas to the Germans and to the Japanese when they came cap in hand asking and turned all that money over to the Middle Eastern tyrants and the Russians. Mm. Right. What else? He's produced the most totalitarian legislation that Canada has ever seen. He scuttled the Constitution. He stole Canadians' bank accounts during the trucker convoy and mm -hmm. acted unconstitutionally, which, which the courts have already decided. Um, his energy minister, Stephen Guilbeau, is a delusional, nature-worshipping activist and mm -hmm. has been since he was five years old. He's at war with Alberta, which has like the third largest oil reserves in, in the world. Sask Saskatchewan has the largest uranium reserves. Canada could be insanely wealthy if we weren't childish beyond belief. So is public opinion turning on Trudeau? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it's In all likelihood, he'll be scuttled. His party will be scuttled in the next election, next okay. October. But he'll hang on till October 25th because he's made a devil's deal with Jagmeet Singh, the leader of the socialists, a man too stupid to even negotiate for a cabinet position despite having formed a essentially a coalition, which is also unheard of in Canadian, in the Canadian political tradition. There's never been a coalition like this. And anybody with any sense who forms a coalition as a minority party leader gets a seat at the table. But Singh, he's a Rolex wearing, um, what would you say, tailored suit socialist. You know, I don't know what sort of creature that is. Gilbo's shirking of responsibility and the Liberals' constant secrecy should concern all Canadians. It reflects a government that thinks it's above scrutiny or consequence, only being accountable when absolutely necessary. This is a dangerous mindset, especially when dealing with billions in public funds. Canadians deserve honesty and transparency from their leaders, not childish denial and finger-pointing when asked reasonable questions. At the very least, the Liberals should immediately disclose who is receiving net zero accelerator money, how much each is getting, what emission targets they've committed to, and progress reports proving those reductions. There's no excuse for hiding these details from taxpayers. Canadians deserve representatives who focus on serving the public interest, not on avoiding consequences for missteps like Trudeau and his eco-extremist minister. Well, that's all for now. What are Trudeau and Gilbo trying to hide by concealing details of the $8 billion corporate handout? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, where we share daily uncensored and unbiased news straight to your inbox. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.